Hello art lovers. Uh, this is John McNaughton. Welcome to my painting studio. Today I'm going to teach you the secrets about my painting One Nation Under God. <laughs> Okay, there is so much about this painting I can talk about. I, I've i actually given, I call them firesides or uh, speeches where people will have me come and talk about this painting. And I can, I can talk for over an hour about this image and the stories behind it and, you know, why I did certain things in the painting the way I did them. And it's just, um, it's so... There's just this painting just means so much to me, and I feel like it's a good idea for me to uh, do some videos. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to do this with a lot of my paintings where I take the time to explain some of the stories about these paintings, and I can't do everything in this one video, so I think that I'll just start with some of the background about how this painting came about, and um, maybe you'll find it interesting. Uh, it's called One Nation Under God, and the way I got the idea for this painting is not like some of the paintings I've done in the past where I'll actually sit and ponder and sketch and, and figure out, you know, what goes where and all that kind of thing. This painting was not like that. Let me give you some background. The way, the, what, what happened was this was back in 2008 and up till then I'd mostly been doing religious and landscape type paintings. And I remember specifically it was the day of the day that John McCain was announced that he would be the nominee for to to run for president for the Republican Party against Barack Obama. And I came back to my studio. I was totally depressed, and I I remember sitting down at my easel and I said a prayer. I said I said Lord, I I don't know what to do. I'm just an artist. I don't, I don't know what to do. And I looked in the direction of my easel and I've got a small print here of the full painting so you can see, but I looked in, in, in front of my easel and I saw this for about 10 seconds, completely finished, just like you see here. And it was a large painting. The original of this is something like seven feet wide. And it was, it was, for me, it was stunning. And the vision faded. You could call it an epiphany or a, a daydream, whatever. But when it was gone, I grabbed a paper and a pencil, and I sketched out as much detail as I could within, uh, you know, within that, uh, you know, 20 seconds or so. And that's what I used to guide me to paint this picture. Um, I'm coming out with a new book in November, and it'll have a picture of that sketch in it that you can look at. But for me, it was profound. And even the title was given, One Nation Under God. And I believe that the country and is at a tipping point, even more so than it's been in a long time. And so, you know, all of these, these details in this painting, you know, all these people, you know, the people from the past, you know, the heroes that sacrifice for our country and the ideals of the United States Constitution, you know, all of these things, it was just a powerful idea. And having not ever done anything that was somewhat political, you know, I hadn't really done any of that. Uh, it was a little bit unnerving for me to go that direction. But I went ahead and painted this picture. It took me about three months. And that's the backstory. But the way that the, the, the imagery was chosen, there's some interesting stuff there. So because Christ is the central figure of this painting, I, I feel like I need to talk about um, some of that for a minute. People have asked me, you know, why is he holding the Constitution? Are you trying to say that Jesus wrote the Constitution? <laughs> of course not. I mean, that's not the idea. I mean, that's that's the typical knee-jerk reaction of somebody that leans to the left. You know, somebody who hates anything Christian or religious 
in relation to our government and the country. But I believe that the Constitution is divinely inspired. And so that's a powerful metaphor to have Christ holding the Constitution. And he's pointing at the Constitution, but he's also pointing at the child and the mother and all of these people here, because it's going to take everybody to save our country. Everybody is going to need to do it. Now, over here, and I'll talk about this in another another part, that I, because I can't do this all in a single video, but over here is where we have those that are more confused. And they each have a story as well. And the painting has something like 80 different figures in it. And they're all, you know, some of them represent... I, I guess I would call it a metaphor for a type of American. This is the mother with her child. Some of them are actual historical figures. You know, some of these, like these soldiers, they represent the different wars. And I'll talk about that too in the future. But I mean, oh, this painting was so exciting to paint for me. It was just, it was invigorating to bring history alive to me and to do a painting that has so much meaning it's more than than just a pretty picture, you know, and it's the kind of painting that that it can bring out really positive feelings or very negative feelings. This is a painting that I remember a woman came into my gallery. This was probably ten years ago, and she says, "I can't believe that the same artist that painted the the my favorite picture of all time pieces coming." That's the one with the soldiers and Christ. Also painted the picture I hate more than any other. This One Nation Under God. I hate this painting. And I was a little shocked. And she didn't know I was the artist. And so I asked her, well, why do you feel that way? And she says, I don't like the way the people are being judged and they're all divided. You know, I just hate that. And so I've learned that oftentimes paintings reflect the way people see the world. It's kind of like a mirror. You get out of the painting what you put into it, or what, what it reflects your inner soul, I guess you could say. But sometimes the most interesting people that look at the painting, for me, at least as, as an observer, are those that don't understand what it is. And that gives me an opportunity to kind of explain what the meaning is behind the picture. And there's a lot of meaning. So here we have the the Constitution, we the people, and he's holding it there. Let's get in a little closer. You see, he's holding it up there, and a little boy is pointing at it. You know, somebody asked me, well, is he pointing at a specific place? No, he's just pointing at the Constitution, because he's the rising generation, this little boy. The rising generation, you know, it's the children of today. It's these uh, millennials. It used to be the baby boomers. Now it's the millennials. And and there's even a younger generation coming. And if they don't rise up to protect the ideals of the Constitution, it's over. So I felt like that was important. And again, I was going back to the original sketch from that vision I had. So that's an important part of the picture. An interesting secret about this was that when I had to pose my model, you know, I needed a little boy. And I could not get a little boy to do that pose. I mean, they couldn't keep their balance and they would fall. And, and so <laughs> I actually ended up using four different kids for this picture. I would take like the, the legs of one, the head of another. I mean, I would, I tried every one of them because I knew exactly the pose that it had to be. And this is what we came up with. I've had people tell me that have purchased this painting that they said, that's my boy. That looks just like my son. And, and, I'm, and for them it is. And that's awesome. So this is the rising generation, the golden boy. You know, you see he's wearing the golden shirt. And uh, he's coming forth. His mother is uh, kind of releasing him, and she's she's you know been teaching him about the Constitution, about the values of American exceptionalism, you know, of which I'm a big believer. You know, I, I think that any country who has their 
morals founded on Judeo-Christian values as our country was, is going to be blessed. Uh, it's because it's like the scripture in Psalms that says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. See the red sash here? I actually wrote in ancient Hebrew, you can probably barely see it, but I actually wrote on there, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And it's red. You know, his, there's significance to the red color. For me, it has something to do with, you know, that he suffered for our sins. You know, the the blood that's been sacrificed by so many people for this country in the name of God. That's a powerful concept. You also notice the little nail wound in his in his, in his hand there. Um, you know, every little detail for me was exciting. Um, if we go up here, you see some of the, the details in his clothing. You notice there's an alpha and an omega symbol right at the top of the golden robe. And then going down the hem on both sides, all the way to the floor, there is an olive branch, which represents peace. It's also in the collar. I haven't even got to the uh, tree of life. That's so much to that. Maybe I'll save that for the next video. But the golden robe. You know, I, I could have done a, a white robe. I could have had him dressed like the man of Galilee, which I've painted many times. But this was the glorified Christ. This was the resurrected Christ, the King of Kings. And I wanted him to be glorious, like a like a king here. His, uh, his train goes all the way down. You can see it, 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 you can see it fills along the bottom and spreads out. He's got a foot coming forward. He's in, things are in motion. You see that? Things are in motion. His knees coming forward. So for me, that's a powerful image. I'm not going to get to everything about the way I painted Jesus in this picture. But I'll just mention a few things. I, I wanted his face to be very strong. And this is kind of the iconic Jesus. Now, there are so many ways to paint Jesus. Everybody has an opinion of how he looks. You know, some say he had really dark skin. Some say light skin. Some say short hair. Some say long hair. Some think he had a long beard. Some think that he looks like the, the picture from National Geographic where he looks like he could be African-American. Um, and my, my belief is that he does some look in something like this. That's me. That's my artist's prerogative. But more important than that, I felt like I needed to paint an image that captured how most people identify him so that when they saw this image, they would know immediately who I was painting, whether they like it or not. This is kind of the classic image of Jesus Christ. And I didn't want to paint him too feminine or too masculine, kind of in the middle. Um, I'll mention something that's interesting that as an artist you can do that uh, helps to uh, get a strong feeling for a Jesus picture. And that is I make the eyes just a little bigger than what they would be on a normal person. And that gives you the feeling that they can look into your soul. I also chose to have him looking off in the distance a little bit instead of staring right at you because he sees what's coming. He sees the future. And for America, I hope it's a positive one. Uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's the idea. Let's get a closer look there. Take a look there. So these are just a few things. Next time I'll talk about the symbol of the tree of life and some of the other things here. I mean, this painting, I've just barely gotten started. Hope you've enjoyed this and um, I'll talk to you soon.